Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, the last of the which we're playing once again as the state of Guangdong, but this time instead of uh, playing as Sony's Morita Akeo, we are currently in 1962 and we're under Tai Chi still, but we're going to go with Matsushita just to see what his campaign is like. So we've gone ahead and already selected uh, the Matsushita weapon, but we've also gone ahead and we want to go down his path for, uh, well... Making sure we can have a good uh, launch and whatnot. And we will prioritize, uh, what is it, computational power? Uh, yeah, oh, maybe not. No. Which one is it? I forget which one I chose. A better life, a better world. Good morning, it's 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, Japan Standard Time. 7 a.m. Canton Time. Time for the morning news. My name is Sugara... Uh, Suga, Sugawara Sukero, bringing you the latest development in Guangdong from a studio inside the Canton Government Media Complex. The Japanese government has announced its continued uh, steadfast support for the Guangdong administration, and the co-prosperity sphere's jewel in southern China. So before we begin, a message from Matsushita Corporation, our trusted sponsor and undisputed innovator. Perhaps this very moment, some of our citizens are tuning in for the first time on the new TV sets for this year's product launch. A most encouraging set indeed. Our annual festivity has something for everybody. Koshu residents and home island tourists alike, from washing machines to refrigerators to innovation beyond the wildest of your imaginations, a better life and better world brought to you by Matsushita. And now on to today's news, as ever, Guangdong shines across the South China Sea as a hub of investment and beacon of prosperity, with an estimated 105 newly registered Canton Japanese over the past week, chattering, wait, what did you mean there's a str- Silence for about four seconds. Ah oh, yes, forgive the interruption. Appears work stoppages have persisted in certain indigenous settlements. But we once again assure everyone that, that every citizen, that every available security report has forecasted total elimination of such inconveniences within the next month, as pledged by Chief Executive Suzuki Taichi in the last week's Police Department press conference. Before we begin our next program, let us all, faithful subjects of the Emperor, reminisce of our solidarity in the face of countless adversities that bore the fruits we enjoy today. Let us wish, with the purest of hearts, a thousand years to His Majesty, to our perpetual principles of unity and mutual assistance, to our collective triumph against the talons of imperialism, and to the everlasting glory of the sphere. How many more of these? So, we are playing as Matsushita, and that would be the way we go for the rest of the campaign, pretty much. Um, the fourth electronics conglomerate, Guangdong, is a Nissan subsidiary of Hitachi, led by Komai Kinichiro. Um, their strategy focuses on underselling competition by selling highly power efficient electronics. So we really want computational power. How many more of these? So here we are at. We have the W31 home air conditioner, window mountable, um, installable at home. Alleviates humidity. Terrible, I know. Um, that's okay profitability. Uh, but we will show product interest and product quality. But really, uh, we're going to be bouncing around in the first couple uh, years here of Matsushita. Just because I've read through everything before in my Sony run. I read through everything and I'm not doing that again for a long time. So in the meantime, um, we're going to like do the best we can with Matsushita. We'll see how the products go. And yeah, kind of go from there as we are basically replaying the campaign so we can get to Matsushita. And I don't think there's anything unique here that I really need to read. Uh, Stanley Ho is okay. I'm not sure if we should really use him for Matsushita or not, or the Yakuza might be better. I, I, my understanding of Matsushita is more of a, like, just kind of keep things the way they are, so... I might do Notorious Rackets, but maybe not. I really don't like the Yakuza, because if you look at the Yakuza and what they're capable of... Uh, the Yakuza, they increase corruption by quite a bit, but so does Stanley Ho, but it's quite a bit less. And give our monthly Japanese expat support, which is decent. But So, I'm probably going to go down this route as well. If you're going to read this one, please go ahead. I've read all these before. Uh, but if you'd like to read them, please go ahead. We've already done a coordinating product development. Identify the breakthroughs. Accept it as a launch. Police situation. Meet with the Kanpai Tai. Meet with the Japanese elite. Score with the Cantonese, Japanese. Motivate the Chinese workforce. As well as update Tokyo. We'll see what happens. Propose the revised labor standard ordinances. Matsushita's like, eh. Suzuki's like, yes. And then meet with a Maverick, of course. Educate the engineer. Hold court with the heir. Confirm the banker's credibility, if we need to. A red envelope campaign, maybe. Call the vote, of course. As well as an invitation to Sing King. All this stuff, so. I might read some of these later. I might not. We'll see what happens. Guangdong's place in the sphere. Pass from the Pearl Rover Delta. Cost of informants, important, of course. Language barrier. Gangsters chasing gangsters. As well as Project Panopticon. You, me, and an air conditioner. As summer approached, the employees of the Songki Wholesale Company found that it wasn't work that killed them, it was the heat. Even the fans turned to maximum strength, they would feel their will to work dissolve in the rivers of sweat flowing from every pore, panting like dogs in the stale muggy air. Uh, their initial misgivings about the box installed in the office windows wouldn't let it more more hot air in. They were quickly dispelled after just 30 minutes of feeling the brisk chill set over the office. They had only praised for the Matsushita W31 air conditioning unit. 
Life, uh, Office Life quickly reoriented itself around the W31. The employees quickly discovered which desks were close enough to be comfortable without being fr frozen. The management learned that the, the costs keeping it on largely paid for themselves and productivity. The complaints from outside passerby about dripping water were ignored and it's for the factories, while well, nobody paid that much mind in the first place. Cold comfort. So we only got to 74.25% average between uh, interest and, pro and a quality, which kind of, you know, it's okay. We got one more let go seat, which is nice. It's, it's our first one, too. We didn't have time to get a lot of political power, and we want to cut down on corruption, too, and increase the research speed. So we got uh, over 2% real growth for almost 5.5%. Almost 5% uh, GDP growth, one over a billion in miscellaneous income for the first time, not bad. Decreases Chinese government support, which sucks, but it is what it is. Um, but we'll keep working on them. We'll also probably do this one as well in the Force Scientists in Overtime. That'd probably be good to do, as we're still fighting down here in, uh, you know, Malaya. But a good first step for uh, us and Matsushita. Beating down the door, the office of Matsushita Konosuke in Osaka was often called the Eagle's Nest, within the exclusive club of Matsushita's top executives. From his inner sanctum, the elder Matsushita surveyed his empire with a keen eye, also the younger Matsushita reflected as he made the ascent. He made sure to keep his subordinates fit, getting here was quite a climb. Entering the office, Matsushita quickly saw that his father-in-law was in an agitated mood. The old war horse was an mercurial man to most who know him, but Matsushita Masaharu had been around him long enough to notice a little detail. Standing by window, his jawbones were starkly outlined against his cheeks, his spine rigid, his lips a razor-thin line. An ovation, the old man said, starting to talk before he even turned around, as where we'll beat the Zaibatsus. They're old and slow, and they have no ambition outside the sphere. They have lost the edge that put them where they are now. Agreed, Mas Masaharu replied, which is why I asked to meet you today. We're working on breaking into the Japanese market, and our weapons will be air conditioners. Zaibatsus already sell them here, Konosuke replied dismissively. What is our benefit? The cost. The Zaibatsu sell to the wealthy. Their units are too expensive for anyone else. Ours, however, far cheaper and maintain top of the line quality. We'll market ourselves to the middle class, a huge and growing market that the Zaibatsus cannot reach. A smile broke across Konosuke's face at that. Our savior, as always, Masaharu. So we're going to go ahead and read Old Court with Air because it does involve us. As heir to the prestigious electronic manufacturer Matsushita Electric, Matsushita Masaharu's voice carries great weight inside the Legislative Council and the wider Japanese community. His position has helped develop a persistent vigilance against movements that may be negatively impact what will soon be his company. Therefore, Suzuki's reforms will unfortunately not be welcomed by Matsushita. The position of an heir is so highly precarious, so no matter how hard Matsushita tries to cement his position, he could always use some assistance, and who better than help than the chief executive himself? Yasuda may raise concerns of the future of the established relationship with Suzuki, although these qualms will have to be accepted to the heir, support of the heir is to be gained, of course. And of course, we will have that too. Right on the little campaign, a necessary arrangement. Matsushita Masaharu, the president and representative of, a uh, representative director of the Matsushita uh, Electric Corporation, had a supercilious smile resting on his lips as he sat opposite Suzuki. Chief Executive, I'm assuming that I've been called here to discuss the matter of the Labor Act. Suzuki responded with a simple nod, prompting Matsushita to follow up. Why well, have you decided to request the support of Matsushita? Our history has not always been the most smooth after all. Why not request the support of Yasuda? They've always been your biggest allies on the council, if I'm not mistaken. Suzuki took a few moments to consider the response, even as Matsushita's calm, calculating demeanor unsettled him. I decided that it is a wiser decision to employ the help of your corporation rather than try and convince immovable hardliners like Ibuka and Fujitsu, or even over lenient liberals like Morita and Sony. Matsushita seemingly contemplated his choices, like analyzing every word that came out of Suzuki's mouth. I believe an agreement can be certainly be reached, but at a price, of course. I would like your backing in future endeavors in the council with equal access to uh, or greater than given to Yasuda. Your act hurts our profit and growth forecast, and these, so these requests are necessary. I'm sure you can understand. A look of relief appeared upon Suzuki's face. Of course, I'm glad we can come to an agreement. As Matsushita walked out of the office, Suzuki's mind remained fixated on his uncanny, unbreaking smile. It cannot shake the feeling that if he left the, his back unguarded, he might find a dagger protruding from it with a little warning. And now, we just have to wait. The Revised Labor Standards Ordinance Passes. It was a sunny day in the Legislative Council, and the Chief Executive Suzuki Taichi colored himself pleased. His proposal, just right enough to give workers a taste of tolerable treatment, keeping them docile at a reasonable cost, had passed. Granted, the Legislative Council was divided on the matter, but it was always was, at least they were not too squabbling too violently. Matsuzawa, Takuji, and Yasuda, as always, were willing to convince to Suzuki's rule. They politely were applauding, and Suzuki could tell that some of them even meant it. Murita Keo and his reformist Sony delegates, on the other hand, were in jubilation celebrating what they had called important and long overdue progress, or less pro prosaically, a big effing deal. On the other hand, Masashita Masaharu and his lot were much calmer, offering superficial congratulations that Suzuki could tell none of them meant it sincerely. A few of Ibuka's men that did not file out of the silence were much the same. Ibuka did not stay behind and offer any incentive to his thinking. Suzuki was not entirely pleased, though. After all, he had to compromise on his own sense of business integrity. That is, bend over by using bribes, not really, to get the bill passed. Somewhat. But at least he had succeeded, and that was more than anything worth anything, more, more worth more than any betrayed principles. Cheers, he thought. So, 
overall not bad. I only read that one so we can get through all this stuff one, and then and we'll see what happens once he falls apart, and we're done with this, as we're trying to cut down on corruption, and eventually, probably early on, we're going to start collecting more political power and really start making sure that we have enough police presence all over the place here. You, me, and a tape recorder. The best place to hide something is in plain sight, day in and day out. A steady stream of notables, executives, managers, employees, and other acquaintances made their way into the thoroughly unassuming office in Hong Kong. The full set of golf clubs, a wall of bookcases stuffed with meticulously labeled binders, then each stack of paper stacked high on the desk, everything spoke to the overall importance of the room's occupant 15 stories above ground. It was a space to speak freely. Promises, agreements, and contacts were haggled and agreed upon. No creed or loyalty was too scared to be won over, or sacred to be won over. Through honeyed words or cold cash, that officer had borne silent witness to the best and worst of Guangdong in equal measures, and so had the unassuming advice of white plastic, nestled strategically under a pile of books that never seemed to be finished, a disused toy whose red buttons seemed to be permanently jammed in place. The tape reels were wisely hidden elsewhere. So we have an average product cycle this time of 71 and a quarter, well, like last time too. We increase our seats by one. We have a little bit less than 2% real growth, uh, over 4.5% GDP growth, a little less than a billion in income, and we did market to China this time, just because we did Japan last time, and I don't want to wear out either one too quickly, but right now the cap is at 46, so we have to spend like 2.5% to actually get up there. Um, I don't mind actually decreasing it by that much, 40. Looks pretty good to me, we get 5% overall. And you know what? We could use that and still do well with it. So we get 25 more political power in the end, which is very nice. In the meantime, I was slightly... We were trying to get uh, Muscle Cheetah here in power. We were just Guangdong. I do want to increase the police control here in Shokan, which is going to take forever to do. Because the tribes are so flipping strong there. But something that we're going to rework on as we are still working through the effects of the Yasuda Crisis. We have Chief Executive Matsuzawa right now. We're going down to uh, Morita's plan once again, like we did in the Sony run. But in the end, hopefully we get... Uh, Matuzawa, but we want to let it go just by a little bit. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. I've read that before. Um, and we'll go with keep the workers working, of course. Uh, really, if you want to read some of these focuses once in a lifetime, same as it ever was. If you read that, please go right ahead. Um, I'll just be clicking on a lot of these focuses, so if you want to read them, you are more than welcome to. The Morita Plan, um, a midsummer afternoon dream, huh? At the best of times, inland China would not have been a very good vacation spot for a Japanese businessman. businessman. Apart from the suffocating heat <clears throat> and choking humidity, there was an additional health hazard of a bullet through the skull that could put a serious damper on the precious few days that they were affording, loosening his tie. Uh, uh, in an otherwise unforgettable laxity in manners, Matsushita Masaharu's personal A glanced at the green, rolling countryside, and wondered why his boss chose to visit this particular bomb crater rule crap hole rather than any other, but of course, he voiced nothing. The boss knew best. He was getting to his boss, of course, too. And Sir Andrew Grid coming with a subordinate, however. Uh, the part of his mind that was completely divorced from the material circumstances was working overtime. There could be no one in the world that enjoyed weather like this, and while the average peasant might simply grin and bear with whatever stained teeth they had left, the portly warlords that had grown fat from the peace would not. Once upon a time, the Japanese military engineers produced uh, machines and transform that transformed the Chinese landscape into a bowling heck of mud. Blood and wasted souls, now under his leadership, his engineers would bring that most of the industrialized luxuries, temperature control to the savage lamb. A few muscles twitches, uh, a few muscles twitch near the corners of his mouth that once long ago might have produced a smile. It was almost poetic. Poetic nonsense can stuff itself. Time to send some letters. January 5th, 1964. We are playing favorites now. Most of the assets of Yasuda will most likely be bought up by some companies here in Guangdong. As many of the companies have been members on the Legislative Council, we have an opportunity to get them on our side. We can simply play favorites with the companies on the Council, selling them the assets in return for a few favors from the Council members with Matsushita's offer. The Matsushita Electric Companies approached us with an intriguing offer. If we were to sell the assets of Yasuda to Ele Matsushita Electric, the company would also take on Yasuda's liabilities as well. Their prices are full support within the Legislative Council when they need it. This deal would not only bring more money for government, of course, but also rid us of any debt or interest we inherited from Yasuda. Can't say Chung Kong. Or hail Hitachi. Ooh, I don't know if I want Hitachi. Um, the subsidiary of Nissan. But swapping favors, Matsuzawa had sent all the accountants working on the Yasuda valuation home early. A break from the hard work, he said. As for himself, he stayed behind in the office to run through the numbers again, and to let Matsushita into the exec chief executive's office after hours. I'm grateful you made time to see me, Matsushita opened, his polite smile never wavering. I was starting to think you weren't interested. Cut of the chase, Matsushita, Matsuzawa said pointedly. What's your offer? The upcoming auction selling Yasuda's assets, not his debts. 
Matsushita said placidly. You sell to me, I can take on some of those debts and dump them in Japan off of the government's balance sheet. The more I get, the more debt you can offload, and we'll pay full price. That's remarkably generous, Matsuzawa noticed, scratching his chin, and the catch is... I know you still command some st uh, sizable support in the Legislative Council, Matsushita looked at Matsuzawa in the eye. If I do you and Guangdong a favor, I'm sure you'll listen to me when the time comes. It's only fair. Matsushita plays the long game. Matsushita buys Yasuda. The auction of Yasuda's assets has been handled with all the delicacy of a butcher carving a, 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 a hog's carcass. But the prize being our building, the unit price are doled out of the bidding of buyers without affection or sentiment. The falling gavel heralded another part of Yasuda's corpse soul for parts, striking home with a resounding thread of a cleaver centering bone. As the final bang ran out on the hushed auction floor, the assembled press tallied the winning bids, seeing which of the tycoons would walk away the lion's share. They turned to see Matsushita Masaharu, smiling coyly in his seat, with Morita Ibuka, Morita and Ibuka decamping towards the exit in defeat. Matsushita watched the scene unfold emotionally, uh, watching the reporters crowd around Masashita for the comment before he was walked off stage without a word. The transfer of ownership can confer power as well as assets, and so the reason that the press had no further interest in Matsusawa, just as they had no further interest in y Yasuda. May Matsushita enjoy the day in his limelight. Is one of the auction for the remaining Yasuda assets. Should I see that 9% of the share increase liquid reserves by 0.8 billion? Very, very cool. Um, too close to tell right now. We're leading with 37%, which is pretty good. A scale on the shoulder, Matsushita Masaharu. It was the, the unmistakable sound of his name blared across the hall that decades of accumulated etiquette began to work its magic through Matsushita. First to manifest with a mild cheek to cheek smile and exhibit a sincere appreciation of the approval of his peers. Next. The almost mechanical gesture standing up. A um, uh, uh, subsequent stride across the row of seats, limbs coordinated into a finely tuned cocktail of enthusiasm and restraint, the perfect display in front of dispassionate glares from the other corners of the complex. Such were the one stride and true procedure after another, etched deep within his muscles by the hundreds of meetings and banquets, and why Matsushita mused as he reached the, the aisle, should his coordination as Guangdong's next chief exactly be any different. Yep. As it began his advance towards the center of the hall, something within it began to crack. Somehow it felt inex inexplicable. Tremors rippling through his legs, even as every step remained nothing but confident. How Somehow he felt a stream of lead coursing through and weighing down his spine, even as his posture maintained a perfect 90 degree angle. Beads of sweat began converging upon his forehead, uninvited. With barely concealed desperation, his gaze danced from attendee to fellow attendee, with a brooding Morita Akeo to a sneering Ibuka Masaru. But as he might, the source of this indescribable fright continued to elude him, until the moment he ascended to the podium and turned to face the 99 constituents of Guangdong's legislative apparatus. Then it finally came to him. <coughs> He was afraid, afraid of incompetence, of ruin, of failing the millions, now burdened upon his shoulder and crashing his family name to the ground. For one single instant, the illusion of composure dropped and shattered into thousands of broken flying shards. For one single instant, Masaharu, the scared child, scrambling for the microphone, the wrinkled yet stern visage of his foster father haunting his mind, his mind once more. It is my utmost honor to take the mantle of leadership. Emerging from the period of political instability following the Yasuda collapse, the Guangdong Legislative Council has voted Matsushita Masaharu of Matsushita Electric as their new chief executive. They adopted action, or Scion, a one of Japan's most successful independent businessmen, Matsushita, stands as a moderate figure between Guangdong's reformers and corporate hardline factions. His tenure is expected to ensure security through modest reform while also facilitating the continued expansion of enterprise and profit. Matsushita is highly popular among Guangdong's Japanese business community, but his paternalistic approach to governance may alienate many, especially among the lower classes, to stability and expansion. Oh, we still have this old focus right here, too. Oh, the game is lagging very hard. Ooh. Oh, please don't crash. Ah, look at this guy. Masashita, Masaharu. More political power, worth support. Household electrics, uh, research factor, good. Inflation rate, modif rate modifier, nice. Not bad. So right now, where are we at? We have 4.2% real growth. And a little bit of surplus. Well, barely. Actually, not really any. High as bucks. Um, if you want to read about this, please go to head, head. I think I'm pretty sure I've read this before. Um, our approach to policing will evolve into pervasive Kenpachi networks. And that changes the tree to Matsushita and the Silicon Years. Very nice. <coughs> um, yeah. Well, let's begin. Chief Executive Matsushita. It's often said that a man who are in possession of vast amounts of intellect prefer to avoid the glaring limelight, never taking on the reins of responsibility and authority directly. Fearing the sword of Damocles continually hanging overhead, the saying, though widely applicable, is far from gospel, is evidently demonstrated by Matsushita Masaharu. Cunning and resourceful and exceptionally astute businessman, his entry into the power via the Pusint of Matsushita family may seem like blatant nepotism to the unaware, but his calculating demeanor and pragmatic tendencies have assisted greatly in cementing his position. Now, as the strive of the Yasuda crisis casts its ominous and looming shadow over Guangdong, its penumbra, extending far and wide, the responsibility of recuperating the shattered ruins of Guangdong's economy and workforce falls squarely on the shoulder of the newly minted Chief Executive Matsushita. 
Visions of an efficient industrial powerhouse that was once Guangdong. A never-ending upward struggle to place benefit above all else. Leaving and establishing a stable and illustrious legacy for the success of Guangdong and its everlasting institutions. Become a worthy ex ex uh, successor. Do we want more Japanese expat? Well, actually, we might want more Japanese expat. I've been ignoring the Japanese expats. I've been doing more Zujin and Chinese for. Um, but assessing the situation, I suppose we do that one first. It's extremely apparent to everyone that Guangdong has not been faring adequately for quite some time, and the responsibility of handling the problem smoothly now falls into the hands of Chief Executive Matsushita. As such, you require clear reports and assessments of the current state of Guangdong um, to determine just how deep Guangdong's issues, of course, lie. Uh, no matter what, it's necessary that this matter be elucidated before any direct action takes place in order to ensure maximum efficiency and swiftness in eliminating any troubles towards a smooth recovery. Brotherly competition. <clears throat> uh, if you want to this, please go ahead. Nice. And we need more political power to continue to lower this as well. So do we want as much as Shita, as much Japanese ex, uh, excess support? This land is my oyster. It's been barely a week before, barely been a week, and Mat Morita's already pres pressed at least stinky fingerprints all over the government complex. I mean, 10 new Chung Kong names a day on the first floor, mumbled Ibuka with a mouthful of bok choy. As if there weren't someone else's opinion they forgot to ask about before turning the whole darn place upside down. And about someone else, you mean the two of us. I agree, Matsushita chuckled. Is he down another plastic cup of jasmine tea? Three, of course, if we're counting Mr. Komai. His voice was cordial. The lucky flash Komai sent it to his left on the round table. Anything but, but. That would make three of us versus Morita and Lee's two. They might be one company short, yes, but no less dangerous. Yeah, yeah, they're bad news. I saw it coming, and you saw it coming. What else is new? Ibuka shrugged and leaned back on his chair. All that's left to do is for Komai to work his campfire time magic or whatever and do whatever he does best, and Komai, are you listening? Hello? And there Komai Kenichiro sat, oblivious to the clanking of plates, spoons around him, eyes frozen on the chopsticks in his right hand. Caught between the two wooden halves is a roll of a flour. Wrapped around a serving of minced meat, and as his fingers squeezed and squeezed chunks of mince foamed and oozed out of the seams as they did the dark red soy sauce down on the tablecloth below. For a lot of time I spent in Manchuria, he muttered, I never got to visit a meat factory and learn how to make pigs into pork. A shame, really. He raised his head, meeting Ibuka and Matsushita's befuddled glares. I appreciate our breakfast today together, gentlemen. Har gao, siu mai, ma lai kao, chong fan. At this, he raises his chopstick with a roll of flour. You wouldn't find these names on a Japanese hotel menu. It's really a treat to try things out for the first time again. And well, plenty of first in our lives, wouldn't you say? Of course. Of course. And we have a cup of, uh... Green tea? Pe peach tea. The Manchurian Connection. Now there goes Alba. Um, we're going about this. Please go right ahead. I think we have some calls to make. A bit ahead of time, but that's okay with us. Keep lowering corruption. I suppose uh, campfire test sports, probably uh, expat sports, probably the most important. But it could be wrong. I need to double check and look it up on the Reddit, probably. Because right now we could use more approval from both of these groups. Coming with the successor. <coughs> the position of chief executive is by no means an inconsequential position, and therefore, that's naturally an extremely unstable one. In order for the chief executive to be able to conduct his performance assiduously and with efficiency, we first absolutely need to demonstrate to the legislative council that the man who currently holds the position is no weak world lepidus. As such, Matsushita has planned to address this legislative council personally, making sure that we cement and reinforce our reputation within the administration. I'm going to go to because can. I just want to get as much police presence as possible. We could. Probably should. Campai type's not bad to have. But it does increase corruption. I don't want any corruption at all. Day 1, Matsushita Masaharu's first day of chief executive began with a report. The Commissioner Tsushida Miyazaki's replacement wasted no time in delivering a hefty list of stations, his stations' deficiencies before his workday began. Please, the chief executive signed off on one of his minor requests. The new management cash bonus for every man in the force. For the ink dried another document later on his office desk, your coys. Mazel Shudika would describe his financial security as grounded visionary, eager and full of ideas, but not so zealous that he would chase his son before learning to fly. By late morning, Mazel Shudika's secretary arranged a meeting between the men later, later in the week. Now, a letter from Ibukov somehow found himself sandwiched between the busy man's reports. Mazel Shudika fed it to a paper shredder and engraved with his namesake. No words if he guessed his contents wrongly. The madman will reiterate in person, it in person regardless. The contraption continued to wear own cut as the chief executive left for lunch. On things went afterward. Reports in all forms. Reports from years prior and in the present. Uh, from matters of state to matters of discretion, Matsushita poured through them exactingly, one after the other, their facts digested by a ravenous appetite or veiled by his unassuming mien. No detail is spared lest his absence leave his vision for Guangdong deficient. The senator had sunk beneath poor shorty by the time Matsushita finished. 
Enervated by for the, from the work, yet invigorated by his findings, the company man left his office brimming with solutions great and small, term will be as fruitful, no doubt. Proper facts and sound answers go hand in hand. Steady steps on an uncertain path. <coughs> Decrease the chance of government support. Uh, the key to a stable career is a good image, something that will afford you a legacy in the annals of history. No is more aware of this than Chief Executive Matsushita. In order to secure our position in the present and our memory in the future, we need to take measures for our reputation, mainly the handling of the problems, whether they are concrete or invisible. The first few years of your tenure are crucial for Matsushita, as it determines how the populace remembers him, how his history remembers him, history remembers him, and how the world remembers him, of course. I definitely don't want to do that one. Uh, let's see, let's see. I can't put that as important, but... First steps. <coughs> um, also, this is ringing of the door. Um, if you want to do this, please go ahead. Fellow representatives, guardians of our executive and legislative institutions, and adversaries we have, he'd have to wrestle with during his entire tenure, Masashita Masaharu, offered a bitter smirk to himself as he stood at the front of the legislative council complex, the gaze of exactly 198 eyeballs locking upon him. As head of the Masashita Electric, chief benefactor of the state of Guangdong, it is once again my utmost honor to be nominated among equally qualified men as its overseer and humble servant. He saw off another smirk as a wave of murmurs and nodding heads washed over the crowd perching before him. Exactly the intended reaction, this is how his prestige, and that of the Mas Matsushita name, will be reaffirmed and the other corporations acknowledge and appease. The tenuous hours of redrafts had seen to it. And at this very moment, uh, this, the very existence of our state stands at the precipice. He allowed himself a pause to conceal his deep breath, seeping down his throat. I appeal to your conscience, your rational desire for everlasting prosperity. We seek not enemies, only partners. Ho only wholehearted cooperation will save us from our predicament, as it is cooperation we shall commit ourselves to forevermore. Whom exactly this is meticulously crafted words were directed at, not even Matsushita knew. Perhaps it was Marita and Ibuka, along with the outsiders from Chung Kong and Hitachi, or perhaps it was a part of Matsushita family that always refused to embrace him. His mind drifted back to Osaka, to Konosuke's growing distant gaze, and the old man see for himself the merit of, uh, to the art of compromise, through which and which alone the Matsushita Empire would adapt and uh, endure. As he finally lifted his head from the podium, there were no thunderous roars and cheers, only lukewarm applause, but applause was enough, to, so Matsushita closed his eyes, content. A decent start. Ooh. Uh, Guangdong has still so much left to offer the world, and Matsushita will leave his mark on every facet or every face of the Silicon Delta's economy. More growth. To achieve true economies of scale, three pearls will need more workers than ever before. Lean into our greatest partner. Even if Guangdong is right at its own ship, additional support from our backers in Japan will make a position bulletproof. One of good reserves. Round two, most beneficial to us. Powers like money. Safe and sound. Stable in the security situation and Matsushita's own image and style will be critical for ensuring political survival. Nothing to hide. Nothing to fear. We cannot rely on incentives in the underworld alone to do the job for us. The police and Matsushita's grip on this institution must be strengthened. Merciful heart. Once tolerated activities were no tolerated no longer. Strongly built. Hmm. Corruption is a swamp. Unmask the worst offenders. That's not bad. I kind of want to start with uh, this, though, or at least Guangdong's potential. <laughs> Guangdong, before the Yasuda crisis, was a shining star. This is the nexus of the corporate interests. It uh, boasted one of the fastest growing economies in the sphere, rivaling that of the co-equal co sphere members. Alas, the crisis struck us down from the sky like a th hunter shoots down a bird. But Guangdong's no ordinary bird, it's a phoenix, born again in the ashes of strife, more majestic than ever. Our economy with the right guidance could reach newfound heights and value and growth than ever before seen. Also, Shida, our new chairman, will be that guiding hand. With his control of one of the five largest companies here in Guangdong and his connections with the rest of the corporations, Mazda Shido tap into the nation's potential and usher in a golden age of prosperity and profit. Let's just hope so. As, uh, ooh, Shibiru wins some more. Ooh, we might be able to trade to that nation too. How many more days do we have left? 20 days left. About less than three weeks. Or we really must concern ourselves with uh, everything else up there. Not a lot of police control in a lot of these areas. Nice. Pack them in the cities. 
Cities of Guangdong are the industrial heart of our economy and our nation as a whole. Also, she has ordered the government to move civilians from the uh, countryside to urban areas to delve in the p p policy mandate urbanization. Mandatory urbanization should increase the output of our industry to the extreme and give companies a chance to grow in size. Many are forced to relocate to cities against their will, and many more are outraged about seeing their friends and countrymen hauled away to work in factories. Their opinions are irrelevant, as if we would listen to the cries of a bunch of barbaric backwater peasant farmers. James X best support, more growth, nice, we like the growth. Brick and mortar, here and here and here. Uh, <clears throat> well, ooh, Tashi has the answers. Nah, we're okay. A financial secretary, Yokoi Hideke, stepped back from the paper map, laying on the chief executive's or chief minister's table. Snapping his, uh, uh, shut his red pen, and circled on where the names of Shantao, Guangzhou, Wan, Shenzhen, are small towns along the winding coast, through sp uh, sparse, underbuilt, and dim before the three pearls incandescence. Yet there is laid both the potential and foundation, potential for booming growth, and the foundation of Matsushita's Guangdong. Its namesake CEO, uh, idly traced invisible lines from red circle to red circle, from hinterland to shoreland, road and truck crisscrossing Guangdong's breadth like stitches binding it as a whole as the circles became cities. The province's idling farmers become productive workers for new factories sprouting up like rice stocks after monsoon. With a vision so promising, the lavishments for Hong Kong and its fellow executives have proposed seem myopic. Satisfied, Masashita said, the plan of ours, how soon can we begin? I met with the contractors on and off before, and replied the phlegmatic uh, minister. As soon as the council's continued support, we should have more labors at the sites within a week. A great game is taking shape. Terrible quality. Terrible interest. A T100 transistorized radio. Nice. Target countries. Good set of China again, but kind of okay. Italy it is. Ooh, we still have a yearly deficit. That's not ideal. On their own, decreases expat support. Oh. Accelerated urbanization will be added to our sort of laws. Our promises of an easier life. Point one. Limited relocation. Ooh, I don't know. 47 seats. We will need to be a little bit of corrupt to get everyone above there. Um, decreases expat support. We'll see. Maybe we'll do lean into our partner as well. It's very apparent that the Guangdong has been struggling moment monetarily for quite some time now, to the point where, the in order to stabilize the budget, we need to look towards external sources of support. Japan had always nurtured us in the state's infancy, and we may have to look for a bailout from our greatest partner, undoubtedly. Japan will not be pleased about initially by our request, but them accepting it is essential for the prosperity of the state, even if it means we're forced to resort to begging. Swallowing pride to the esteemed individuals, Matsushita clenched the fountain pen with excessive force as he continued to compose a letter, his hand unusually firm and steady, erratically twitching as he progressed down the line after line. The sheet of paper was embellished with columns of ink, forming words in clean and organized handwriting. The letter contained the usual hollow pleasantries, greetings and praises slathered in honey to conceal bitter words of pleading in order for us to continue and further advance our operations. Matsushita bit his lip and, could, and uh, placed his palm upon his forehead. He simply could not believe it would have to come to this, where he would be, have to address the men in Tokyo as if they were his masters to acquire some money. Due to the rapid accumulating debt of our state, we humbly requested that additional funds be provided. This is matters of the utmost urgency, and if the state does not manage to escape the accumulated debt, there would be consequences for the global economy. The funds have to be secured. I implore you to send as soon as you could. I absolutely assure you that we will be reimbursed in full once our situation is improved and you may have my unwavering guarantee and a commitment. Matsushita repulsed, almost gagging as if scrabbling the sentences on a paper. Imagine the man in Tokyo sneering in an ap antipathy as he read the pathetic words of imploration, remarking about his lack of honor and di dignity. He says he slid the folded sheet of paper into an envelope, and the simple act of penning a letter had thoroughly drained his resolve for that day. He vowed to never defile his reputation in such a manner again, not like this. Necessary sacrifices. Uh, we'll see. The promises of an easier life. In order to encourage further immigration into the cities and keep existing residents from bewiling, we need to advertise and offer some support. Although funds are always scarce and need to be treasured, the support we'll be offering won't be a substantial, of course. News of this generosity would need to be a broadcast as a showcase to the populace. The media would certainly prove to be useful in that aspect, while also not putting a strain on the budget. So, okay, well, a little bit of growth, not much. We do decrease Zushin support. We get more Chinese support, though, so we're trying to make everyone as happy as possible. Well, we're still trying to do this as well, even though it's not going great for us right now. It is what it is. Pop it up by two more. Oh, not that one. Not this one. Japanese expat support right now is what? It's only 64%. It's still going up, though. So the goal is to get as much police as possible eventually. And I'm not going to lower any other support here, too. So we'll see. Urban House Ordinance, only 47 seats. The buck stops where? If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Yakuza Trial? We'll do it properly. Huh. 
I'll go with that one. <coughs> it's time to take our proposals to the legislation, Legislative Council. The Urban Housing Ordinance will begin mandatory urbanization, and also loosen housing and construction regulations to promote the buildings of houses for new workers. Compile with this bill, a new quotas will be set as soon as mandatory urbanization starts, as well as programs that will modernize both farming and factory equipment. If this bill passes, this will be a huge victory for the Matsushita administration. If not, it may be signed that Matsushita's plans for Guangdong will end before they even start. Or we could also do safe and sound. Guangdong is a land of freedom and prosperity, but if we are to take pride in the stable society in which our citizenry can enjoy these natural rights, as the utmost importance will be organized a strong security presence throughout the Delta. From dis dissidents recruiting in the city back streets, to officials taking bribes in the shadows of government buildings, the state must wield the authority of the regiment that is orderly and passed by the rebellious so that law and order can guarantee the peace and security so desirable in a great nation. And if we are to be fair and if we are to be free, we must punish the wicked so that wealth may flow down the lifeline of a great nation. E. How many days left? 28 days. Oh, that's not great. 10% here. Because right now we are at 78 and 57. There goes President Kennedy. Goodbye, President Kennedy. Good luck in your next life. You always end up seeming to die in every single campaign. Somehow, some way. It's like the devs don't like him. We're going to do this one because we want the political power. Increases police state and Koshu, which we do want as well. Uh, but gives us more time to work on this year. Welcome to the neighbors. Uh, I've heard this one before. <coughs> Lee Mai's arms possess a watery strength. That surprised many witnessed it. As she hauled a particularly hefty grocery bag back to her house, she was aware of the double takes, and even the occasional cop in her direction, she marched on without so much as a second thought. What she was not used to was anyone offering to help. Mai did not know how to react when a sturdy man approached her, asking her if she could carry some of her weight for her. To begin with, she she refused, eyeing him with suspicion as she tried to press on with her journey. However, he did not relent. Sorry to bother you, apologized the man, smiling faintly. My family and I are new to the city. We haven't gotten used to the way things are yet. We don't really know where anyone else here is either, and I get lost all the time. My reply with a cautious yet understanding nod. She clung on to her bags. She continued the conversation. Where are you trying to get to? The nearest bus stop. It's just down this road, tucked behind the third road on the left. She gestured as best she could, but the weight of the bags still made it difficult. I wish you and your family the best. I'm sure you will all become familiar with this place soon enough. I hope we will. Farm work was never easy, and from what I heard, life here is heaven by comparison. Simple income, sturdy roof, no more worrying about the weather every minute, of every hour of every, every day. I couldn't ask for much more uh, for myself or my children. He paused for a moment before continuing. And thank you. You are very kind for helping me. I won't forget it. What he said was nothing more than wishful thinking, and Mai knew it, but she couldn't help quite bring herself to tell his man. The swords on his hands were still fresh, deep in places. At least it would be used to be punishing the processes of whatever factory snatched him up if he was lucky enough to get a job at all. Perhaps his optimism is misplaced. Or maybe it's not. How many more days left do we have? Uh, 24 is not bad. Um, it's not great to do this one, but what else are we going to do? 5% here, 5% there. Is this cheaper political power one. So now, where are we at? 78, 67, not bad, not great. Just dump as much as we can into here. Well, we could do that one, but... Eh. Don't really want to lower the support too much, you know. 16, we could... Eh. What if we did this one? What did we do at the same time? Oh, we should have waited. For 10 days, for 15 more political power. Uh, we almost get two a day, which is not bad, actually. That takes 15 days just to get up there, though. I should have not done this one. I think we have to wait for that day to end. Uh, you know what? We'll try it. So right now, we are at 83 and 67. So we push it forward. The average is what? 15. 76 and a half? We're down by 6, up by 6, no, 75, 8, 8, about 75, yeah. So if, right now it's 75, if it's any higher than 75, then we should be okay. So right now it's 75, if it's any higher than we know we did it right, safe and sound. Nothing to hide. <coughs> Nothing to fear. Addressing the Legislative Council, the Legislative Council is the glistening gilded pillar upon which the state is held. The bedrock of authority that guides and supports Guangdong is something that is absolutely not to be ignored or neglected. Though it's evident that we, Matsushita, held a copious amount of sway under the dominating corporation, the other corporations of the council are nevertheless present in the Guangdong's administration and economy. It's required that we take notice of the concerns and issues of the other corporations, as this act will further seal Matsushita's position as the center of the council. Something we imperatively need to prove. Look at that. If only we could get that done before the month ends. The T100 transistorized radio. 
Okay, so it did work. So if you do it even on the last day and push up profit profitability, uh, it still works. Experience unprecedented clarity of sound and fine reception to the 9 transistor T100 radio. The latest from Matsushita Electric. Listen to your favorite programs when and where you please. Everyone say the same thing these days, muttered Chen. Weren't they releasing 9 transistor radios a few years back? Yeah, but did you hear the price? Mock said, fiddling with the dial in the break rooms with T100 to a rising dinner static. Keeps on going down and down. Monster Sheet is the just the latest one playing the game at the 30% discount or less. Whatever, even for the Chinese radio station, it's all government approved programming, right? Radio play is the latest baseball scores from Japan. I can't say it interests me even if I hear it from every house on the streets these days. So fast as the waiting for the morning paper, and listen to this! Mock twisted uh, the dial once more, and the static uh, uh, faded away to a scratchy, faint voice in the Chinese, an amateur speaking a language they understood, and a message they both held dear. The people speak in the space between the noise. Got more seats? We more real growth, growth, miscellaneous, miscellaneous income? What's not to love? So now, with that in mind, we get another seat as well. Now, maybe we can actually pass this. If you want to read this again, please go right ahead. We still have only 48 seats, but after this one, we might just need to bribe one person. That'd, that'd be it. And that would be a great thing. Feeling the cool air? Cool air? Cool air. Nice. Hey, that saying is finally gone. <coughs> nice. Oh, Alonzo paused to catch his breath in the moments before one of the waiters brought him another order. Business had his pizzeria had picked up in recent weeks ever since they installed the new Matsushita air conditioning unit. People were flocking to it in the afternoon when the summer heat was at, at its worst. Alonzo was happy for the customers and their money, but the extra work was putting a strain on him. As soon as the deal the air conditioner had been, had been telling him to hire another cook for a while, maybe now he would. When a waiter came to him with another slip of paper, he sighed and turned to his oven. As he did, a blast of cool air hit his face. The air conditioner at least had the added benefit of making the hot kitchen more bearable. Good business for you and me. Beautiful, my friends. Nice. We could do that, but I want to save it for now. Computational power is not bad. Evil's a Guangdong. How much corruption do we have now? That's a 25. That's not bad. I still want to hit this harder, too, but we'll see. Good. 49. Nice. Um, after that one. Ooh. Our workers shall be main trained in the latest tools and methods to maximize productivity. Ooh. Let's see, 26. Um, I think I read this before. Uh, if you want to read this, please go ahead. Has it really been that long ago? Probably. To keep our cities fed, we must mechanize rural agriculture and more efficient agribusiness, even if it upends local farmers. A hungry man is both unproductive and resentful. More growth. I like that. Society development will begin to increase. Uh, when we build apartments for the future, efficiency must always be for the first and foremost in our minds. Increase a lot of support, though. Part of it gets worse. Oh, well, let's we'll do this one first. Our factories here are some of the most productive in the sphere, as they need to provide goods for much of East Asia. However, the potential of their workers is not its full potential, since they are used rudimentary tools and equipment. Um, modernization of factory equipment should be of our top priority, since it holds a key that unlocks our full economic potential. Um, uh, urban problem. Legislative options. One, Fuji Fujitsu Amendment. Corporate priority. Focus on planning priority to corporations, building factories and offices over construction of houses. Two, Sony Amendment. Compulsory standards. Future housing to follow specific standards enforced by the government. Uh, rejected options. Issuance of infrastructural contracts favoring ourselves, Ibuka or Morita. Option unsustainable due to expenses. Possible loss of internal support. Two, simply biding time. Conclusion. Support these guys. Um, corporations given planning priority. Support Sony Amendment. All future housing must follow certain guidelines, but set by the government. Well, sure, why not? But, uh, also, there's an option here that someone said uh, asked what this was in uh, my Sony run, so it just opens this up. So right now, here we go. That's not bad. 52 seats, very good. We don't need any more corruption. So this will increase Chinese government support by 3% in three states. Increases Chinese opinion, more growth, poverty will slowly begin to improve, we'll spend a little bit of money, become more centralized for the economy, increase the Chinese support, and as well as Chinese opinion. Oh, I'm okay with that. In that's case, increase the corruption as much as possible. Yeah, the slice of the pie. Um, proclaiming your sympathy with the urban poor of Guangdong is nice, but when rubber hits the road, you need some, someone to actually construct the housing. Normally, a simple enough pro proposition, Matsushita thought. City. In the back of his motorcade, he saw Koshu's skyline blurred by its high rises and governmental buildings casting its dark shadow. The sun was beginning to set into his right, possessions began to disperse for the night. With those night dwellers who ran Guangdong in the dark beginning to come out. This entire country is built off one simple principle, give and take. Or one cannot expect to rise high in Guangdong if they are unable to ingratiate themselves to others by doing favors for them. Then when the time was right, you could call on the favor for whatever task you needed done. Whatever illusions he had to dispel on this idea, they were long gone now. 
Choice was clear, either subcontract Morita or Ibuka's men to help build the urban housing. Not at any practical purpose, but as time and time again would show, a political one. The ordinance was of no danger of abandonment or the leg by the Legislative Council, but the more who backed the pro proposal, the stronger a position he would be in. Well, uh, Matsushita thought back to his days in school as a child. Ka Caesar was adopted by the elites of the Ro Republic because he had the compulsive habit of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a value ill mentioned in the Pro Rover Delta. Matsushita looked back towards the marina. Skyscraper is designated with the azure and scarlet signatures of the Fujitsu and Sony alike pockmarked the entire skyline. Where was Matsushita? Where was his legacy? Did he really think that these snarling wolves would show the, him the iota of mercy that he would now? The Legislative Council would bend the knee to him, regardless if he gave the black and these scrapes of victory to his enemies. Yes, enemies. He would do just fine by himself. Was it foolish to place some faith in himself? No. Matsushita received the infrastructure contract. Or foolish to shoot yourself a foot and give the contract to Ibuka. Uh, forgiveness is a virtue, no matter what they think. Give the contract to Morita. This seems very corrupt. So now we do this one. Um, let's see, so, so since we choose us, we get healthcare quality will actually begin to improve, as with healthcare and education, part of it will get even better at a school, hospital, and two admin offices. Spend more money? Yeah, it's kinda cool, I like, I like that. And here, we're gonna do this too. More support. Cut corners of research. I will absolutely never ever do that one. Nice. Actually, where, where, what's the economy looking like now? Let's do that. 1.14, not bad. 40% growth, good. A simple plan. Uh, as a night, uh, last life faded from the office. Masashida was faced with one more meeting. Komai Kenoshiro, the Hitachi Corporation, had asked to visit the chief executive, claiming that he had an easy answer for passing Masashida's newest ordinance. Masashida disliked such deals, but he always made certain to hear them out. Komai Kenoshiro arrived with a smooth air to him, somehow as uh, lively as ever despite the late hour. <clears throat> And Masashita was surprised to see he had no briefcase with him, no notes, demands, typically were complex enough to require papers, this had to be something different. Komai reached out a hand with the chief executive, no worries, Masashita. I'm not here to force your hand, you won't have to change a word in the newest legislation, I only require a monetary compensation. Masashita stood up in his chair, confused but not indignant. A bribe, you mean? Komai smiled, you're not a fool to be, not to not give it. You'd be fooled not to give it. Think about how this conversation looked with Marita Nibuka. They'd ask for revisions, heck, they'd practically end up rewriting the bill themselves, working with me is easier and safer. Matsushita sat for a moment, considering the offer, finally offered his thoughts. Keep your hanglings, hagglings to the market. Give me a number, we'll talk. We good. So we're at well, 40, oh, 46% support, that's not terrible. Zushin Sports at 55, that's not bad, actually, and we're still assimilating them, too. Not bad. And Japanese expat support, we probably need to get a little more of that. I don't know, we'll see. I can't wait to see when we pass this, the final inspection. Matsushita gave a strange smile to the camera as much more enthusiastic Morita beamed next to him. Inviting the press to order the newly to tour the newly built public house complex, the first of its kind in Guangdong. <coughs> um, uh, have been Matsushita's idea. Murray's attendance have been at his own request, insisting he see the results of the standards he helped craft in person. Matsushita couldn't deny that Morita's proposals had produced a reasonably high quality living space, fully hooked up to power, water, electric, and gas, uh, or, or power, water, and gas. The apartments, one of which we're now standing in, would provide each resident with their own kitchen, toilet, and shower. Luxuries have been scarce among the common workers of Guangdong until now. But looking over it, Matsushita couldn't help but think of the cost of the government's car for all this brought with it. He was brought out of his brooding when Morita took him by the arm. Don't look so down, he said, giving Matsushita a conspiratorial, conspiratorial look. You've really accomplished something. I know you've been looking to open a new facility, so have I. We should expand this neighborhood, hire some new tenants here. Happy, healthy people make better workers. Matsushita nodded. I suppose you're right. Nice. Factories here are some of the most productive in the sphere, and they need to be provided to provide goods for much of East Asia, however. The potential of the workers is not at the full potential since they use rudimentary tools and equipment. Modernization factory equipment should be a top priority since it holds the key to unlock our full economic potential. Like I read before. Gotta keep corruption down as we keep working on the police here too. Good. <coughs> um... Yeah, why not? Remove the restrictions. The new workers being shipped into the factories will be a great economic success, however. With all these new laborers, we don't have enough homes for them, and with such large numbers of people we will send them to, to we send to the cities, we could have a real problem or homeless crisis on our hands. The solution to this problem is rather simple. Remove regulations on housing or construction to encourage businesses to build housing and apartments for the new workers. Our economy would benefit and our laborers would have homes. Sure, this means the houses aren't as safe as they used to be, but living in a house that could hurt you is much better than living on the streets. Early retirement. Ooh. Uh, I probably want to read this one. As the spring blossoms heralded the beginning of April, Hirata Masaharu's career is coming to an end. Maybe we should have read the other ones. Section Chief 
Tatsumi read through the Masaharu's handwritten resignation, his worn hands uh, seeping sweat into the paper before looking his 28-year-old employee straight in the eye. Congratulations on your marriage, Hirata. I'm sorry to lose you, but it, but it can't be helped. Thank you for your guidance, Masaharu said flatly. It wasn't a formality. Mitsui Bank had made sure that aristocratic son of the esteemed painter. Hirata Shoto had earned his pay, but Hirata had little else to say. His future, after all, is now elsewhere. To be welcome to Matsushita Electric as its next head. Tatsumi set aside Hirata's resignation letter for his folding fan, leaving it ostentatiously as he spoke. Just don't disappoint your new wife or your, her family name. Look at the two of you, Matsushita Konosuke laughed gregariously as his new son-in-law sat sheepishly beside Sachiko. Uh, uh, Sachiko, his only daughter in their Osaka home. I'm sure all things will get easier between you two, but for now let's eat to celebrate your joining of the family. That's very gracious of you, Masaharu replied, eyeing the feast set up before him, and to prepare all this food even at a time of war. It's nothing compared to the happiness of your marriage, Konosuke said firmly, his Osaka uh, Osakan. Osaka, accent hiding in none of the genuine warmth of his words. Even if you got much to learn about Osaka's ways of doing business, I can sleep safer knowing you're with us now. From Hirata to Matsushita. We're removing restrictions. Very good. Nice. The building's not bad. Could be better, though. Could be quite better. Our debt to G GDP ratio is kind of concerning, though. As it is only going up, which is unfortunate. How is poverty looking right now, though, actually? Uh, could be better. Battle of Montevideo, eh? I need for growth. Feed the extra mouths. Mandatory urbanization has created a new problem for us, and we'll have fewer farmers to grow food and feed our people. Since many will be sent to work in the factories, there will be less people to grow food to feed everyone, in order to make up for this loss. We have set the food quotas higher than before. Normally this would be something we, that would put the financial safety of our agricultural sector at risk, but given that our farmers will use abandoned plots and farms left by the factory workers, they can manage these new quotas. We will even help modernize mechanized equipment or the farmers will make their jobs even easier, but that would have to be kept a little quiet. Sondagodish, eh? Got a lot of work to do here. We do want to lower the triad support, but keep increasing police support for now. Because the uh, Yakuza is pretty high, too. And honestly, this one's not bad for Chinese support. This gives you more expat support, which is not bad either, but still. Nice. Not bad overall. Happy December, everybody. Happy, happy December. Not bad. It's been uh, about... Well, it's like three hours for me to try to make, actually make this video. Just trying to get to the beginning where Matsushita actually takes over. Over two political power a day. That's nice. If anything, we might actually do some of this. We have the Japanese advisor. That might be good to do. Do whatever it takes to please him. Really. Uh, here, I don't want to lower Chinese support. Uh, try a support. Can we lower it? I don't want any corruption or lose any support, too. Um, lower Japanese expat support. Decreases, increases triad support, which is something we exactly do not want. The Imperial General, Matsushita Masaharu. I had always thought of the Consul General of Takashima's office as an impressive place, with its slit windows and prevailing smoke, but Takashima himself had never been that way. The Consul General was, as you would expect from a bureaucrat of his kind, a relatively tired man with spectacles and the prevailing air of wishing that he was anywhere more prominent. It was irritating at times, friendly to others, generally cooperative, but frightening? No, never. Takashima was, in short, nothing like his military counterpart. General Nagano Shigeto stood less than he leered over the desk, eyes like steel in a suit to match the color. Beams of light slashed across his silhouette, illuminating a face which had seen it all, the mouth drawn to a thin line of distaste. The chief executive, for once, squirmed a bit in a seat under the pressure. General Nagano, I take it to that the Council General is not available? No, Nagano replied, his voice lapped. We'll discuss the topic of organized crime in Guangdong ourselves. Organized crime, Masashida. Masaharu could see where this was going already. I have a proposal, I assume. A suggestion. The IJ is more than capable of controlling this epidemic, yet you do not allow our forces to aid your overworked, let's say, police forces? Why? Sovereignty, General, really. The answer was so much more than that. Like how stock prices didn't tend to, tend to like martial law, or how Matsushita Masaharu didn't relish in the idea of waiting through blood to get to work. He knew Nagano would that, do that too, this time holding his posture as the other men leaned in. Shh. Can't even get to speak your mind. You all really are roaches. I keep looking here for more, but there's nothing more. Out of house, out of home. What are they doing here? I thought maybe it wasn't going to happen until... <coughs> Chi Meng. Chi Ming muttered to himself as he leaned out of the door. Before his eyes are a few construction workers, hard hats and R and all, armed with clipboards. They surveyed the apartment, taking in, talking instinct, indistinctly among themselves. He leans in harder, trying to see what they're just talking about. Here's the words, demolition and skyscrapers. What? It was about at this point that a worker, looking confused, approaches them. I thought this building was supposed to be vacated. He's supposed to have up by now? 
But th there was nothing. Ching Ming looks around hesitantly, trying to see if there's anyone there willing to back him up, as though as though she heard his prayers. The old woman living two doors down from him. He remembers her name, Chiu Qing. Chiu Qing steps out. What's going on? She asks, holding a walking stick. For a moment, the three of them looked at each other, blinking. Then raised a cacophony. Well, I ha we have a now... The worker breaks through, assigned to himself. Chi Ming doesn't think he wants to be here. Look, this building's be demolished. We have a permit. He waves around a piece of paper with an official looking at letterhead. Though neither Chi Ming nor Chiok Jin catch what it exactly says. For the sake of your safety, I think you should go. He narrows his eyes, reminiscent of a hawk just having sighted its prey at the same time. One of them starts seeing dynamite under the walls, reinforcing his veiled threat. Chi Ming and Chiok Jin look at each other, then return to the room, sticking all they can. For Chi Ming, it's his cat, all his clothing and bedding, and all the food he can muster. He sights Chok Jin, slightly encumbered by a bag of belongings, dragging a bag behind her. As the two walk out of the building, they hear the noise of an excavator trampling its way to their home. There's no looking back. Apologies, Pearl. The Three Pearls are Guangdong's largest cities, and the most important cities, too. Centers of industry, finance, and luxury for the Japanese. The Three Pearls, Hong Kong, Macau, and the capital, Koshu. However, as prosperous as their cities are, Matsushita sees that their glory could be taken to greater heights than ever before. Matsushita has a plan, develop and specialize the pearls. Koshu's factories will be grown into twice their size and could turn the capital into a center of manufacturing that could rival five cities. Hong Kong will be made into a hotbed of bureaucracy and financial planning, transforming it into Guangdong's nerve center. And Macau, with those luxury casinos and hotels, will become the Las Vegas of the lost COVID prosperity sphere. A businessman's paradise and a gambling oasis, the likes of which the world has never seen. Sounds like fun to me. So with that in mind, let's talk to the Chinese representatives, because we might need them later on. No, not the product cycle, god dang it. That's the only time we actually get enough money to do anything we want, really. What's that target goal? The most irritating man of the world. The only positive that came with meeting Song Zhiguang, Matsushita Masahara decided was that he wasn't Wang Jingwu. Beyond that, there was very little that made him appreciate these meetings. It wasn't fair to the consul general, the man is an annoying dude, and he really gets under the skin. But at least he was trying for an honest cause. Many men in Guangdong did worse deeds for worse reasons. Matsushita Masahara had even caught himself respecting the man from time to time, mushrooms in Spain. At this specific moment, though, there was very little that kept him from reaching over the desk and strangling the glasses wearing diplomat. Fugitives was the issue again, how he hated, hated, hated fugitives. How he hated the slimy bureaucrat across from him, the right who delighted in harboring enemies of the state, he was talking now the little dude. I understand your frustration, Chief Executive, the man began. The very tone of his words were like nails on a chalkboard, however. There are procedures to interstate extraditions. I would need to consult my legal staff to review con concordance with Chinese laws and refer the matter to Nanjing and wait for the response. I'm sorry, Chief Executive, but my hands are tied. They're right across the border, you and I both know this, Matsushita Masahara received. If you would simply arrest and return them, those holes excavate could end in 30 minutes, and you and I could never speak again. The Consul General smiled, that would be very simple, yes, but the laws of sovereign states must be respected in Guangdong. It's a sovereign state, is it not? Of course it is. Don't, do, don't make that sound anymore. Nice. Fair enough. That settles it then, the Consul General concluded with a flourish, closing his floor emphatically. It was out of sea within a second. His suit jacket strained on a body, his body, a second after that. Masashida Masaharu uh, was, uh, was in no such rush, and indeed he watched with surprised interest as a counterpart busied himself so suddenly. Where's the fire, Consul General? Masashida Masaharu laughed. Song paused a moment as if catching himself, then returned to his tidying up with deliberate care. My apologies, Chief Executive. I have an outing with friends in the Chinese district, old friends of mine, and suppose I'm excited to see them. Another little laugh from the city chief executive. I would hate to be working in my free time. What do you mean? Song turned back to face him, smoothly buttoning his suit. Every time I see you in the paper, that's meeting school children or shaking hands with factory workers or speaking to nurses. Always in the Chinese district, always for work. Song chuckled. No, 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 not always. I may be a diplomat, but I grew up here. It's a professional and personal duty to see how my hometown is doing. A moment's pause, then a grin, don't worry. I'll be sure to let you know of any complaints I hear. Good day to you, chief executive. With that, he slipped out of his office, leaving Masa Matsushida Masaharu's smile to slide off his face alone. At least he has a sense of humor. Yes, yeah, we got something there. Nice. Uh oh. Economic check soon. 24.14 billion. 24.49 billion. I think we're going to do okay, my friends. Beautiful. The triumvirate of our reputation. Three pearls be added to our sort of laws. Well, what's after this one? Assist the sprawling surroundings makes token efforts to alleviate the overcrowding outside of the urban centers. Increases growth by 0.1. The future of Guangdong is in, is in the cities, and the urban elite, or our attention will not be diverted elsewhere. Lose stability, I don't like that. Ah, I do not, I will not decrease police presence no matter what. Absolutely not. That's just a sprawling surrounding. 
The uh, three pros are undoubtedly our greatest and sincerest pride. Brilliant, radiant cities that serve as a glowing and continuous example of economic prosperity in Guangdong's prowess in the sphere. However, the cities certainly have issues. A poorly planned and maintained residential urban sprawl that has been allowed to spread house millions of citizens and workers, though not exactly as a liability that provides living space for men serving in the industry, certainly needs assistance to prevent the brewings of a discontent. But, did I read all that? 1921. Down the mountains, <clears throat> snicking along the coast all the way from Chaozhou to Shenzhen, this road sprawled, spilling and splitting. Road mess. Uh, I think I read this one before. Have I read this one before? I can't remember. Robin met Lamb's gaze as his uncle's car passed by, kicking dust under their eyes and impassive faces. A cement mixer lay aside the reeds, their visage, the silhouette of the men. Heads helmeted and wrapped in band bandanas, seeming to hear sear Lamb's soul. They dug the earth and leveled it out, reinforcing those shallows with concrete, piling dirt into embankments where the train was low in the driver's seat. Lamb's uncle held a cigarette in hand as he adjusted the steering wheel. The ram struck a car with judder and sputter points, prompting him to stop at those junctures. His mother looked sadly into the wilderness, her eyes drifting to the shrinking mountains to the east. Home was now farther and farther away. Lamb missed the rush of the Han River. The road was quiet, save for the buzzing of the late night cicadas. As they got close to home to Shenzhen, the left side of the road tapped, tapered into the beaches. White sands, beyond which was the blue green sea, and the distant steam whistles bit into the warm into the air with an audible screech. When they arrived, they decided to eat chicken rice at the bustling market. As Lamb made his food, careful not to cross his chopsticks, his uncle began to excitedly explain the history of the Shenzhen market. Capital, Chen Jitang. Modernizations and borders across the sea, China for the Chinese. More than shot sat listening, smiling politely at every remark. When the waiter returned with their tea, all Lamb could remember was a steam arising from the brown liquid alongside a faintly sweet smell. I read this moment before. Alone, beacon in a long tunnel of darkness. But if you liked the first episode of us playing as Matsushita Masaharu, please consider leaving a like, it helps me out. A subscribe if you're new, check out my scroll link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow to see what else we can do with Matsushita Masaharu. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!